This is Andy, and welcome to episode 12 of Celestial Journey. Um, yeah, today we're going to make this pack not make me hate my life, um, because we're going to automate blood production, and probably get a second uh, altar set up, and then hopefully we can begin automating agricraft resources, get a ton of seeds, and uh, over the next couple episodes, set things up so that we're having fun in the end game of this pack, not suffering. So, first things first, let's go ahead and make that Ritual Diviner Dusk. I think I crafted up everything for this, except maybe I didn't make the inscription tools yet. I have all of these, yeah. So, the three inscription tools here are Tier 4 and Pride. Do I have Tier 4? One, two, three, yeah, we have Tier 4. Um, so the one thing I don't have is I need to dip those in there. And the next thing is I need a wildwood block, which requires wildwood heart, which drops from this guy, which requires me to click on, I think the, I found like a little altar thing in wildwood. I think we need to click on it with these wildwood chunks and then kill the guy. Uh, I'll meet you there. I labeled it very clearly, thing where I need to fight, and let's go ahead and check in here really quickly. Um, where is the spawner? I thought there was a spawner in here somewhere that we were supposed to click on. Maybe I'm wrong and this isn't where I'm supposed to fight? Was that just a big tree? I think that was just a big tree. Okay, let me go look around a little more. Okay, I'm almost certain this isn't just a big tree, but I don't know. Also, why? Oh, no, I've still touched on my pickaxe. Um, but I don't know where the spawner is that I'm supposed to click on. Um, I do need some wildwood leaves anyway, so I guess I'll mine them. Please leave me alone, buddy. Oh, um, I found it. it. I guess the spawner structure is slightly different and slightly more rare than I was expecting. But if I click on this, it'll say, okay, Wildwood Chunk to spawn the boss. And it should spawn in. And it's kind of a big boy. Um, it should fall pretty quickly to my arrows, though. And we should have no problem killing this thing three or four times. Um, so I guess I'll keep you around here for the first one because it's about to be done, but then I'll kill it a couple more times on my own, just so, uh, you know, you don't have to watch and all that kind of stuff. Bye-bye. Uh, I'm gonna get enough hearts, hopefully, that I shouldn't have to, uh, come back here to make the next portal, and that one gave me three hearts. I think we need, like, 12 more-ish. All right, there we go. One killing of things later and i what do i not have for this uh blocks of mana steel geez that's kind of expensive but uh you know i made a bunch earlier so we should be good at least for the moment make a couple of these and then make the this and then make the this except i need to make the runes of pride into the inscription tool dusks so pride and let me do this really quickly, and I'll be right back. And with that last one done, I can go into my ME crafting terminal and turn this into the Ritual Diviner Dusk, which is a huge next step. So we're going to need more, probably more blank runes. So let's go ahead and tag those, and I can undo this. Uh, we should make Kekimurses at some point, and once I automate blood production, we should be able to make uh, the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate, but I also need ritual stones, which require something. Um, I'm going to need one master, which is normal ritual stones, just like that, which require reinforced slates, which are tier two blood things. So let me see if I have a way of checking how many, or I guess it'd be in the blood magic uh, documentation book, right? Well, we run into a slight slight issue um i'm gonna need the awakened activation crystal in order to start the well of suffering ritual because it's a high tier ritual um which means we need at least a tra no at least an archmage which requires a demon gem which requires an elision um or elision ingot which is a tier 5 blood altar for one we need to upgrade our blood altar again and we need a terra steel ingot so 
I guess that means we have to get some more. I need to make another Master Blood Orb. Uh, I need to get more Bloodstone. And I guess I need to make Power Bases. Shouldn't be that terrible. All right, I've done a bit of crafting, and a bit is a little bit of an understatement. I have all of the Ritual Stones now, as well as the Master Ritual Stone. As you can see, it's sitting up there at the moment. But before we do that, I also have everything we need to make the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate. So let's, let's go ahead and make this. We will put it just over here slightly. Um, you need a structure underneath the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate, which is Living Rock and Lapis. And it is, oh, whoopsies, it is this structure, like this. And I forgot I have a shovel in my pickaxe. So we can do this, bam, 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 bam. Terrestrial agglomeration plate. And you need to put a spark on it and a spark on the mana pools that feed it. I believe they can be up to around 16 blocks away. So now we're going to need a mana diamond, a mana pearl, and a mana steel ingot in order to make one terra steel. And you just kind of toss it on there, and it should begin sucking up mana from all three of the mana pools I have linked, just like that. And the more mana pools you have linked, the faster it can pull mana, which means this crafting shouldn't take very long. As you can see, there we go. Our first Terra Seal Ingot, and that will be used to make this, and we need to get to a Tier 5 Blood Altar, which we should just about have the runes for. Um, I might need to do a little bit more rune crafting, but I think I'm almost there. All right, we're doing good. I replaced all the blank runes for the tier five altar. And the one thing we have left is actually the most obnoxious part. It shouldn't be terrible, but it's not gonna be fun. So we're gonna use the mob duplicator. Um, I have a mob imprisonment tool somewhere around here. Oh, it's being used for this guy. Um, villagers can't despawn, right? I might just put them in a hole somewhere because I don't have any more gas tiers. I'm entirely out of gas tiers. I only collected as little as I absolutely needed. So here he goes in there and we need to go find a wither to duplicate, but that's not going to be enough. We do need something to kill it with. So I'm going to make a cleaver, which will allow us to behead. And this looks like a decent cleaver it doesn't look incredible i just kind of put random metals on there because i didn't really care all that much i guess we can add um how do i add more beheading apparently the way you add extra levels of beheading is to put an ender pearl and obsidian on it so i'm gonna add three more levels of beheading which should give us beheading five which means for every kill we get a 50 percent chance of getting a head um if we hold our this in the other hand, we should also get fortune three or a lo looting, I guess, for uh, weapons on it as well. So let me go find a wait, I should probably, you know, mark this guy somehow. Uh, he lives underneath the frozen stone. Let me go find a wither skeleton. Uh, hello, friend. Please don't jump off the edge and let me take you home. OK, mod duplicator with a. Fluid export bumps with one acceleration card for essence, and we should be able to just do or put this into here and spawn with their skeletons. And if I kill them with this, wow, this does much less damage than I expected. Uh, we should sometimes get heads. This is going to be obnoxious, actually. Um, okay, I'll be back. All right, I uh, I killed some withers, and actually the reason drops weren't appearing on the ground is because um, apparently one of the aspects on my cleaver, ooh, don't want to, oh, that wasn't a throwaway slot. Uh, one of the aspects on my cleaver was to teleport items into my inventory somehow. So I also made this big reinforced obsidian thing. Withers cannot get through this unless they like clip through it somehow. Uh, they can't destroy this block. So. I should, I keep saying so, so I should be able to spawn a wither in here, and it won't get out when it spawns, or we're gonna have big problems. Please don't get out. Yeah, he's fine. So we can shoot him with the bow for a while until he gets down to half health, and then I made a really good platinum sword that has sharpness 5 and unbreaking on it, and we should just be able to hit him with that for a while. Oh, I forgot he has, um, he hits us. Shoot, this is really annoying. Um, I am going to need some of those heart, this hearts then. 
rather than kill it by hand then, I just went ahead and stole my mob crusher from the nether for a little while, and this thing should absolutely destroy this guy as soon as I put the range add-on in there. Wonderful. And that gives us all the stuff for it too, so I should just be able to spawn them myself, and as they spawn, they should die almost instantly. So here we are for beacons. I have to replace these torches, I think. Um, they don't have to be activated at all. I think they just have to be here, and then the altar will become tier 5. I won't actually know, I guess, unless I attempt to use... Wait, I have a division divination sigil, right? This should tell me what tier it is. Um, it says tier 5. Okay, perfect. Uh, now, how much does this take? 50,000 life points at how many per tick? At 100 per tick. So there's no way I can manage to keep up with that. Wait, maybe I can? Okay, I went ahead and added 8 more runes of self-sacrifice, and that I think makes our blood altar, or our, makes us able to put stuff in our blood altar much much faster so we might just barely be able to manage this i'm gonna let the internal buffer fill i believe it's about three buckets or ten percent of the capacity of the blood altar i don't know why it exists but it does um so i'll be back in a second who uh i don't know if i've ever clicked that fast in my life but uh i did just barely manage to pull or i guess it was only like 50 percent drained but it felt like i barely managed to pull this thing off so now i ought to be able to make this demon gem as long as i craft some more of these this and then this will also be placed in the blood altar with oh god a hundred thousand lp but only 20 per tick so i can easily keep up with it it just means i'm going to sit here for like a long time so 20 per tick that's well, five, what i'm not even going to do the math i'm just going to sit here and uh i will be back in a minute okay there we go the archmage blood orb is now created and bound i can use a nether star my last nether star to make the awakened activation crystal 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 um and then i should also use that blood orb to charge up my blood network a little bit because we're going to require quite a bit of blood in order to start the well of suffering ritual all right now i should just be able to build the well of suffering ritual you need to choose it by a uh, shift right clicking on your uh ritual diviner for a little while and then you just click on the blood orb until it builds and it will automatically paint the rune stones for you you can paint them manually if you want except that it's a pain in the butt so uh make one of these ritual diviners it's been a minute and there's a big structure here now um but i wanted to make sure this thing would work the way i want it to before i actually uh came back so basically what i have coming here is i had to run another line very ugly up to this thing uh to bring some channels and some energy up here for the mob duplicator um i was going to use a mob detector but i i checked this mob duplicator just to see if it would turn itself off after it spawned a certain amount of mobs. In 1.12, apparently it does. In 1.7, I believe it doesn't. So uh, you will need an entity, entity detector of some sort in 1.7, but for now, uh, we can just let this thing spawn to apparently exactly this many villagers. And we want to use villagers for the Well of Suffering because they give more LP. Um, let me actually check in the configs and see if I can find what that is. Yeah, I don't think they're all listed in here, but because this definitely isn't all the things you can sacrifice. But as you can see, like villagers are 100 LP per, uh, uh, I guess, health point that they are ticked. And uh, m hostile mobs like slimes and endermen are lower. Um, zombies are, I believe, somewhere around the same. These might be changed configs uh, compared to the normal. So... Maybe they're pack specific, but I'm not really sure. Um, I have a bunch of LP in my network. We have the Awakened Activation Crystal. I put a sound muffler up there so we don't ruin our ears. And I should just be able to activate the Well of Suffering ritual. It doesn't appear to have worked, or maybe I need to apply redstone to it. Nope. Um hello oh there it is okay okay uh please die 
Leave me alone. And as you can see, they're being ticked, and our blood network is filling up. More quickly than we can drain it, actually. That's really nice to see. Eventually, we're going to want an environmental controller to heal these guys, but for now, um, we're just going to have some speed upgrades in the speed upgrades in the mod duplicator, so uh, they will spawn faster. And uh, there will be the maximum amount of them, hopefully, in here for most of the time. Uh, we are still not pulling out of this thing faster than we can fill it, which means we could, theoretically, uh, since there's a bunch of LP in my signal, it takes like two, I think it's two LP per operation per like guy and generates a lot more. Um, so we can let this run for a while without even having to worry about it. And we can craft up some blank runes quite clearly. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and put a drawer downgrade in this so I can control more easily the um, type of uh, the amount of snacks we have in here because I want to start automatically processing. Oh, no, um, I, I do want this to extract. Uh, I want to automatically start processing runes. So this drawer is going to have the store do storage downgrade and the storage upgrade times four, so we'll hold four stacks of each type of runes, which should be enough for the moment. Um, hopefully we're not draining this too quickly. No, we've barely used anything out of there. And what to do next? Now we've automated blood, which means I can... Pro well, I probably want to set up another uh, blood altar, don't I? And I want to get into some of these better runes over here. Specifically, runes of sacrifice. These are probably pretty simple to make. So I should make a ton of them, right? Next thing's next. I need a lot of gas tiers. So I'm going to go find a ghast so we can spawn him many, many times and kill him. Many, many, many times. I got one. I found one. Usually you can never find these guys when you're actually looking for them, but I found one uh, fairly quickly too. Uh, ooh. Uh, let me make an Ender I.O. spawner for him, and I think I might just spawn him out in the open and bow him down. Alright, I went ahead and set up another mob crusher and mob spawner system right here. This is probably going to be just the one uh, gas spawner, and it only has a terrible basic capacitor because it uses so much power per, per operation. But we don't need to kill gas quickly. Please stop being so loud. Uh, we don't need to kill gas quickly, we just need to kill them uh, every once in a while to get some gas tiers for some amount of things. So I think that will do. We might need to look at better power generation very, very soon, but I think we're holding up for now at least. But when I start using this to spawn like um, scorchers and stuff automatically, I don't want to be running out of power here because, you know, they'll get out and destroy everything. So yeah, I'm gonna call it on the blood magic for today i think i've set this thing up to passively craft a bunch of uh, slates for us and next time we can upgrade our blood altar a little bit more and ooh, i guess i broke my comparator i should probably put that back on um because it does stop this thing from crafting if it ever does get too low um but i think we'll be I don't think we're losing any. We're not losing any. Actually, I know we're not losing any, at least up to these uh, demonic slates, which we will hopefully come back with four stacks of. Um, so what to do to finish off the video? Because there's some, some more time that we have, and I'm not really sure what to use it on. I guess we could go ahead and get to the Lamb of Cinders. I don't really want to do the Twilight Forest, but we have to do it very soon anyway, so we could set up Elven, Elven Trading. Um, I think let's, yeah, let's probably go ahead and do that. I've never actually gotten the Lamp of Cinders before, so at least there's something new there. Um, I did choose to craft three Eris. Why is it not going? Is that not a high enough tier Blood Orb? Was I using the Master Blood Orb to make Eris before? No, it said Magician Blood Orb should should be able to do it. Is this Blood Orb not um, bound to me? No, it quite definitely is. There should be enough LP in here. Is there an extra slot? Did I set up this automation wrong? I just put this recipe in, so, you know. Um, it, like, it, does, it hasn't affected anything. But apparently this thing is inputting weird, so I have to make a little bit of... Uh, erothium? Is that what it's called? What's this stuff called? Yes, erothium. 
and I don't have a recipe for it apparently, so let me do that. I went ahead and uh, fixed the Aris recipe, we should be good to go. Uh, I can use this for all of the things that it's used in, like the environmental controller, um, but we're not going to deal with that at this specific moment. We'll probably set up an environmental controller for those guys later on just so we can preserve some of this essence because, you know, we are using levels for things around the base, not just this. Uh, but let's uh, ignore that right now because it's not really of dire, dire need for us to fix it. So we'll go to the Twilight Forest. And there is a spider. The next uh, boss for us to fight are the Minotaurs, which you need a trophy to get into, so remember to bring yours. I will pretend like I remembered to bring mine and didn't just cheat myself one in right now, and I'm definitely not going to get rid of it at this very moment. Uh, you didn't see any of that. Um, this is a great place to get anvils if you uh, don't want to spend the iron on it, but we need to go through the maze. We need to find the Minotaur room, which we can probably cheat just a little bit using the cave layers up here, but I'm going to try my best. I, I was going to say I'm going to try my best to not cheat. I'm going to try my best to cheat. I don't want to do this again. And I didn't even really cheat for this. I just kind of accidentally happened upon it. Um, Here's the boss room. I literally entered like right here and I walked up this way and then walked this way a little bit and here I am in the boss room. So let's go ahead and take on the bosses. It sh really should be incredibly simple with this multi-shot bow. Um, Twilight Forest I don't think was designed for uh, enchantments as powerful as this one. So uh, there we go and we get our trophy. While we were down there, oh, there are ghasts apparently. While we were down there, I grabbed a soul vial of an upper, upper goblin knight, which drops these uh, armor shards. They need those for the quest as well as we're going to need some knight metal later in the game. So it said, you know, you should probably grab one. And I grabbed a tower wood boar just because some packs require you to get their essence stuff. Uh, so I, I want to get their essence stuff. And I'll kill this now. Very simply, he's going to pop in and out of existence and be very loud, but he will die. And... nope. And... there we go. Nice and simple. And it's quiet again. Finally. Um, actually not finally, that only took like two seconds. There's the Urgas trophy. And we're on to... what's next? This is usually as far as I go. Do we have to kill the, uh... Twilight whatever purse or the uh, not not the ice lady. You know what? I am going to cheat myself in a little bit of these to complete the quest there throw them away and then oh we have to kill the alpha yeti now. Why? The alpha yeti lives in the outskirts of the ice biome in this snow biome place and uh, he lives in these weird looking hill things. They're very distinct, very obvious that they're not natural. And you can just come in here, wake him up, and whack him a couple times. Apparently, arrows don't work, which is unfortunate for me. Because, wait, I guess I, I did make this sword. I wonder how the sword will fare against him. Um, he's kind of messing me up right now. Okay, okay. Leave me alone, please. And now he's tired, right? Is that what's happening? Uh, yeah, I love, I love fights. I love combat in this game. It's just so good. And there he goes. And we get some Alpha Yeti fur. Thank you. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to take some of these guys' fur as well, just in case we need it later. We probably won't because, you know, what, what the heck would this stuff be useful for? These are ice bombs. These are Arctic furs literally useful for nothing bye bye now we go into here i believe um is it elsa the ice queen yeah elsa the ice queen um or the snow queen um i don't know if this is intentional but this place always makes me think of adventure time i think it might be the penguins that are down there they're very cute looking um i think she's in the the big one this one oh yeah uh as you can see there she is we should be able to whack her a couple of times. I think the trick for this one is you actually have to shoot her, not her little under thing, which is 
slightly harder to do if you can't fly, but um, I can fly, and there, I don't know why that gives conduit facades, but okay. Now we need to find a troll cave beneath the highlands. Kill the troll and loot the vault. The only way we can loot the vault is if we um, have the giant's pickaxe, I think, which should be found somewhere above the ground. Have I come across the giant's place? I hadn't, but I came over here to the highlands and pretty much immediately found one. Fun fact, these guys look like you, and if you kill them, they sometimes drop the big pickaxes. I guess they also drop the big swords. Um, I'll take it as a trophy. It's very large. Um, I probably look like an idiot carrying it. I need this. Thank you. Um, so I came across this castle brick stairway. I feel like this isn't supposed to exist outside of the castle, but I'm also... Yeah, what the heck is going on down here? This is perfectly dug out. I definitely didn't do this. Also, look at how many things are down there. Oh, man. This place is deadly. If Good thing I can, uh, you know, fly. I'm looking for a giant obsidian, I think. I don't know where it is. Ouch. Um, but I need to find one. There's a small chance I have to actually kill one of these guys. If they it said they something about magic beans. Do they drop magic beans that I need to get from them? I am being killed right now. Okay. I don't have any magic beans. Um what did the quest say? So I went into spectator mode to look around just because I'm pretty certain pretty certain the game is trolling me. And uh yeah, there's no vaults in this area. Um I don't I, I guess maybe like it tried to generate the structure in this like chunk area and it just completely failed, but I guess I'm gonna have to go find a new one. Yay. Alright, um, I didn't kill any troll, but I found my way over to here, and I believe this is the thing. So, I think my Twilight Forest is just losing its mind. But, I should be able to break this, given enough time, and we should be able to get our treasure. Okay, there we go, it broke in, and that's a big block. Uh, but, inside here we have the Lamp of Cinders, wonderful. Some emeralds, take those, those are still pretty rare some uber soil, and some magic beans. And hopefully that also- ooh, five ender crystals. Okay, interesting. Um, and then it just wants us to go to the castle. I don't know what- are these used for something? Oh, they're used for Gaia pylons. We're right next to it, so we might as well go grab it now. Um, what's the other quest? It wants us to get castle roof tiles. Okay, I'm just gonna go grab a bunch of those, and... I don't have a rod available. I forgot to turn off cheat mode, didn't I? Whoopsies. Um, no rod of elevation in this pack, is there? Huh. And there is the majestic castle. It actually looks so cool. Like, straight up looks so cool. But if we go to the center-ish over here, oh, over here, uh, where the boss is supposed to be, there is technically a final boss. You can see that it's literally just this guy, and he has a million health, but I kill him in five shots. And there, 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 we win the Twilight Forest. He drops a singular gold nugget. How cool. I love this mod so much. Okay, we're going to take a... Jeez, these things are heavy. Okay, we're going to take a bunch of castle bricks home. And with a little destruction of the uh, castle here, hello ravens, the Twilight Forest has been entirely completed. And I'm pretty certain, certain we'll, we will literally never have to come back here because I grabbed those mobs that I did. Um, so yeah, uh, let's teleport home from the Twilight Forest for the last time. Alright, Elven Gateway Core, and I think my activation crystal... No, does it just not pick it up? Yeah, it just doesn't pick it up because it is my... Did that just straight up use up the activation crystal? That's... 
Oh, I thought I wouldn't use it up. I'm so tired. I'm too tired for this. And also, I just realized, um, or I realized just before I started recording, I, my, my last statement was proven wrong almost immediately. We need to go get a bunch of torch berries, or we need to go get 12 torch berries for the glimmering, glimmering living wood for the elven portal. So let me go do that, and I'll be right back. All right, friends, uh, the portal is assembled. I'm pretty sure it's a 3x3 three three because, you know, that makes things evenly spaced out. I know this one looks a little weird because it's sunken into the ground, but I'm not changing it. Um, so we have one issue. Uh, I don't have enough mana to make the last Terra Steel ingot to make the na na nature nature pile on. My brain is broken. I'm sorry. It's like 12.20 a.m. Um, I ran my long run today. I'm tired. I need to finish this video out and I need to go to bed, which is exactly what I'm about to do. Um, you see, my mana is fully depleted. So why don't we go ahead and set up uh, Trading with the Elves at the beginning of the next video and we can uh, get that doing better. Actually, let's go ahead and check on uh, how many slates we have. So we finished with our blank slates and we've done a lot of reinforced slates already. So let's, add, let's check also the Divination Sigil. I've only used about uh, 100,000 LP, 150,000 LP out of my network, which is really, really nice. Uh, it's probably been half an hour doing that thing. So good work. Uh, I, I bet putting these Runes of Sacrifice in here means it has to work less often, which uh, is useful. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, really leave a like or something. This was probably a longer one. I think I have a lot of clips in store for this episode. So, you know, have a fantastic day. We've finally gotten over the hump in this pack. It's very, very nice. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.